Hi everyone, this is Craig from Critical Mass Games. Today I'm presenting a short video on airbrushing the new Bastion Infantry Fighting Vehicle and Havoc Tank released as part of our Mercenaries range. The Bastion IFV comes with two weapon options for the turret. One's a small missile pack that clips on the side and the other's a small cannon. This nicely accompanies the main barrel. Similarly, the Havoc also comes with two barrel options. The first is an energy based gun and the second being a kinetic weapon. Moving on, we have a few images of the vehicle's primed matte black ready for airbrushing. There's also a few images of the vehicles assembled with the turrets, showing them mounted on the grav and tracked hulls. Now the paint job I'll be doing on these will be a three-tone digital camo pattern. I'll be using the Tamiya XF range, I'll be using XF12 which is J and grey, XF53 neutral grey and XF23 which is light blue. All of these paints will be thinned with isopropyl alcohol and sprayed using an Iowater Revolution trigger airbrush. So not to keep you waiting, I've sped up most of the airbrushing sequences of this video by times two speed, or a little bit faster. Here we can see I'm spraying on the base coat of the vehicle, which is the XF12 JN Grey. I'm using two thin coats, uh, I'm using a Tamiya turntable here just to help me rotate the vehicles without touching them, so I can get complete coverage. Here you can see that I've attached the Pintle weapons to a spatula, using blue tack. This just means I can spray all the recesses without handling the components again. For the components that I do handle, I'm wearing a latex glove. This avoids getting any fingerprints onto the model. For the turrets, I'm just spraying half of them, holding the barrel. Once that's dry, I will flip it around and spray the barrel itself. Now just for completeness, I will flip over the vehicles and spray the underside of them, catching any parts that have been missed. Having applied the base coat, we can now start to think about the digital camouflage pattern being applied to the vehicles. Now it will pay dividends at this stage to take some time to have a look around the internet for images containing digital camouflage patterns. Here are just a few images I found quickly on Google and obviously they help us establish how a digital camouflage pattern should look once it's completed and how it should be laid out. Simplifying the digital camouflage is key to making this scheme work. At its basics a digital camouflage pattern is still like any other camouflage pattern, interspersed colours. Just this time it contains more blocks rather than organic shapes normally found on traditional camouflage schemes. Now to help us lay out the digital camouflage pattern we're going to be using a new product that Critical Mass Games will be launching shortly called Mast Effects. Mast Effects will contain a selection of pre-cut camouflage patterns designed for use with an airbrush starting with the digital camouflage pattern featured here. Using a scalpel I lift off each of the digital camouflage blocks from the sheet and apply them to the vehicle. Now what I tend to do is apply the large blocks first and then fill in around the edges using the smaller masking components. Now this particular sheet features three different sizes of blocks. Having applied the big blocks I'll use the smaller blocks to fill in between them and link the larger pieces together. At this stage it's also handy to have your reference material on hand just to check that you're applying the masks in a fairly authentic fashion. Now obviously how dense you go with the digital pattern is up to you. Now I've gone quite dense with these and it's taken me about an hour to apply the masks to six vehicles and the accompanying turrets. Now once these masks have been applied, the vehicles themselves will then be airbrushed again, this time using the XF23 light blue. With the first layer of masks applied to the vehicles, they're now ready for their second coat of paint. Once again the Tamiya turntable is used to help support the models while spraying on the light blue colour and again two thin coats of paint are applied to each component. Once the base coating is complete and all the miniatures are dry we can now apply the final layer of masks. Now this can be a little less dense than before as the XF53 neutral grey is far darker than the previous two colours and will be more dominating upon your eye. Now one of the hard things to deal with when masking up vehicles and spraying them this way is that you can't actually see what's happening till the very end when it's all revealed. Now here we have the finished uh, base coats applied to the vehicles and the components. As you can see it's all very grey and dull but we do get the excitement of pulling off the masks and see what we've created. So it's now time for the big reveal. All the paintings done, we can start pulling off the masks. For this I use a scalpel or a pair of tweezers. It doesn't really matter which. Whatever you do though, be careful that you don't scratch the paint. There is of course at this stage the eagerness to get the masks pulled off. 
just take your time take some care with what you've done you've spent a lot of hard work getting to this stage already now there we have it a factory fresh havoc tank in digital camouflage pattern of course you can't just leave it like this or spend a little bit more time weathering up your vehicles so if you'd like to find out more about Critical Mass Games products, then please head over to our website at www.criticalmassgames.com. If you like the video today, then please hit the button, and also subscribe to our videos, then you can keep track of the latest ones we publish. Thank you all for watching.